Bill, welcome back to the shop, everybody, at BRS, Bears Rudge Shop. This is the final part four of the Arbor Press slash wood splitter and can crusher. And uh, I had a little more hopes than this, but you know what? It, it turned out to be a job that uh, utilized the lathe, that utilized the mill, utilized a lot of fixturing, and I needed all that uh, experience as a hobbyist and so it wasn't a failure. It's not really a failure. It just don't like red oak. Good old Texas hard season, three or four year old red oak is real spliny. And here is some that is probably five, four or five years old. It's got a chance. Uh, actually, that uh, those two right there split off of this big, huge log. And I need a bunch of kindling. And I think uh, Sammy the Bride would be uh, well pleased. We're going to pull her out here so I use her as a uh, motivator. Yeah, and I uh, sure do miss her, but you know what? She was a good motivator. Let's put her over here so she don't get uh, sold. And I'm going to put this into the uh, uh, camera tripod. And then we'll go about a little bit about the build. Uh, I've got a lot of still pictures that are gonna be at the end of the final video and uh, several other videos uh, as we were setting up, especially to machine this adapter, which is 60, uh, 61 aluminum. And I had my doubts. I was gonna go to uh, the surplus salvage yard and pick up a piece of uh, 40, uh, 61 steel bar but you know what i'm not going to overwork this uh milwaukee aluminum tower uh for the rack i mean excuse me for the pinion uh and uh you know that red oak i know when to quit because once i strip out the rack and pinion or break this housing it becomes not a concrete coring uh a machine I can sell any longer. Uh, right now I can take off this head here and uh, then I can reverse that tower. It'll be turned around 180 and uh, put back on the concrete coring deal and it would make a real usable sellable tool but I didn't have any luck selling this thing so I had to use my uh, old noggin because my rotor cuffs are shot. All right. Let's put the uh, big old uh, Proto three-quarter. I call this a bulldog because, man, I tell you what, that thing is like a sledgehammer in weight. And uh, I've got a full set in there I got from one of my state sales, and nobody bought it. So I just said, well, you know what? We're going to adapt it. Also have this wheel that's off my English wheel. If I had a bus steering wheel, a little bit bigger than this one. Uh, the only thing is I've got on my English wheel, I have it inverted for a reason. Uh, that way it fits on top of the English wheel. And so I'd have to have a shaft coming out of here and then put an inch and a half socket on it. But there's swap meets coming. And that would give me a little bit of finesse uh, just using it as an arbor press. So let's uh, set this in the uh, tripod. And we'll see what happens here. Uh, hopefully I can get it all focused in. And uh, Brian over at BC Block, thanks for your comment. You said, you're gonna use that ax as a splitter? Yeah, well. You know what, I, I'm, I'm the kind of guy that would give up. That's the only thing, you know. I, once I start a project, I, I keep going. All right, we're off. Now this, this wood is not like that red oak, because that red oak doesn't want to split, I mean. But what it does, it makes a good holding deal. And before I was sitting out here on a uh, handicapped chair out there in the cold, trying to split with an ax, and that's, that's no bueno. 
this logger off. Now I've got easy splitting because I need kindling and I'm not bolting this down for that same reason right there. If it gets stuck in that real green wood, then I've got to fight, I've got a new bolt, right? So let's set her right here. Let's take out the ratchet. Splitting with the grain. Oh, real quick. Let's see if we can get you down here on this ax a minute. 70 year old ax, right? Did a lot of milling on it. Got some good experience on it. She is sharp. That's the reason I snug this off. If I had this thing to fall, I would be an ER minus the finger. So here's the grain. Let's let her slam down. Back around here, up to the crank handle. Now, I know everybody's got uh, maple and different parts of the country and oak. And I want to be real careful I don't damage this aluminum. going to do a little persuasion on this. I know I built this so I wouldn't have to do this. But, uh, and the impact. No sir. That was the wrong idea. Got a big socket out here. I got a big huge Milwaukee drill that I could put on here. But then I'd have to make a bracket or next thing I know I'd be in the ceiling. So let's give it a little persuasion and leave this out there for some more. Okay. Maybe not so good. But at least I'm getting kindling. And I've got a bad norther coming our way. So uh, I'll stop the video. Here's for, uh, oh, this is February the 10th. It's uh, Friday. And uh, I'm going to be busy out here getting as much firewood as I can into the house tonight for the next four days. We're going to be below freezing. So please uh, hit that like button and that subscribe button yeah, for uh, DIY shop made tools, homemade tools. Uh, I've already got some people watching from homemadetools.net. And uh, we hope that this video will get out there and I'll uh, actually register, get on with them. Anybody's got stickers, I'd sure love to fill this board up. And same here, just send me an email, look in my about, and I would love to get some more stickers here for uh, Bear's Rod Shop and grow in 2023 to uh, at least a thousand. You know, 427, but I started with zero. And so, you guys, uh, please give us a, well, give me now, because we're without the bride, but give us a, a chance to continue to grow and add your comments down below. I try to answer everyone I can. And uh, if you think this is unorthodox, well, sorry, put that in the comment as well, but be kind to me. I'm 70 years old and uh, let me uh, turn this around real quick. Got to use uh, numerous tools. This was uh, the last estate sale October last year. It's a big old Guardian. Uh, I needed it because the way, way back here, the wrong foo. You know, I had to move everything around. I did a uh, fixture, won an email uh, so bad I can taste it. And uh, I don't know if I'm gonna let that thing go or not, but uh, you know, numerous tools, numerous fixturing, and you'll see those in these uh, steel pictures, but 
guardian just did a super job. I need to get me a uh, cross table made up for X and Y for not only that one, but the big Powermatic. And then uh, this is a beast. And yes, it's still under restoration. And uh, now I'm gonna be through this as soon as I get a bunch of firewood split. There's Rod Shops, you gotta get back to what he uh, actually started way back in 96, uh, already uh, 97. And that is uh, custom cars and uh, auto upholstery. So uh, God bless, y'all have a wonderful day. And uh, thanks to Joe Pye. I had to go back five years ago to a video. This is the first time that I ever turned down a square block of aluminum and then I got it down to an inch and three quarter. And this, if we can get this around, uh, the shaft from the Milwaukee, you can see the angle. It was 20, uh, uh, two degrees at a slope. And so I had to do the math and, uh, you know, Joe's taught us uh, math and how to set up uh, milling at 45 degree angles on square and on uh, cylinders, uh, straight through, whatever. But uh, so that, thank you, Joe Pye. Uh, you're a great, great teacher. Again, last of part four for February the 10th, 2023. Bears Rod Shop, we're out. Please hit that subscribe and like button and share. God bless. We're out of here.